to stop beating yourself up. You may relate to Doug. Uh, Douglas was in a marriage for 13 years to what he describes as a narcissistic woman. Uh, he was attracted to her because she was beautiful. They met in a bar and their eyes locked and they had a conversation that went on into the night and they ended up going to each other's place that night and talking and talking. And it was amazing how much they just opened up. The, the chemistry was just fantastic. It was like fireworks and they would stay on the phone at night with each other. They wouldn't want to hang up. Doug knew that this had to be the person for him and, and pretty rapidly the, the, Relationship progressed, they moved in together, and they eventually got married. 13 years later, Doug couldn't wait to get out of this, this marriage. When he finally got the divorce paper signed, although he was happy to be at the end of, of a very damaging, very emotionally brutal uh, marriage where, where his wife would never validate him, uh, withhold affection from him, and blame him for every issue, every problem. And no matter how hard he worked and what he would do, and he would give himself up, he would lay himself down to try to get some, some type of love or approval from his wife. And, and, and she would just hate him all the worse. And eventually she took all the money and she left. So he was happy to be out of, of, the, of the relationship with an official divorce, but he couldn't help but to feel so stupid. He just hated himself for not being able to see the signs earlier that he was actually picking someone who was bad for him. He really just felt so awful that he was in this relationship and he was unable to stand up for himself. And he, feel, he felt like he lost himself in this relationship. He felt like he just went too far to try to get the approval of this person. He felt, he felt so, so dumb and just so alone. Like, who is he going to talk to? If he talks to anyone else, they're going to say, man, you know, that's women. But, but this is not normal, is it? He would ask himself these questions. He would be up at night just thinking about all the time he lost, all the money he lost. And he started to beat himself up. You're such an idiot, he would tell himself. Eventually, he spiraled into a depression. Now he's wondering, I'm out of this relationship. Shouldn't I be feeling better? I feel worse. In fact, my loneliness is so intense, it's so terrible that I feel like I would almost take her back. But I know that's crazy. I need help. When Doug started working with his therapist and he started going through these issues, he something clicked for him. And he realized that when he calls himself stupid, and when he says that he's so dumb and that he should have seen the signs, he realizes this is something he would never say to one of his friends. There's nothing he would say to, to someone who was looking up to him that he was mentoring. He realized he was being his own bully. He remembered back to being raised by his mom, who was also egopathic and, and harsh. And he remembers how she would never validate him, at least not consistently. And, and, and anytime he did something wrong, she'd be at him with a chorus of, are you stupid? You're so foolish. But all of that is verbal abuse. So if it's verbal abuse for his mom to say it to him, isn't it verbal abuse for him to say it to himself? Doug had an epiphany. His epiphany was that he was being his own bully. Now that he was out of the narcissistic relationship with this woman, who was, who was a bully, now he realizes he's still bullying himself. He's still holding himself down. He's still hating himself. And so he realized that maybe if I stop bullying myself, I might start to feel better. For those who are just joining us, we're talking about the subject of self-forgiveness entitled Stop beating yourself up. Doug realized that's what he was doing. He was beating himself up and to what avail? It just made him feel worse. Many people who 
a step into my office, say that they feel bad for the things that they've done, the mistakes that they've made, and they carry so much shame on their back as a result. Do you feel like that? Some people come in my office and they say, you know, am I a bad person? The fact that the fact that I would stay in that relationship so long or the things that I said and that I did, I feel like I'm a bad person. But I have good news for you. Bad people don't feel remorse about being a bad person. If you're asking yourself, am I a bad person and you're, and you're feeling a sense of remorse about being a bad person, then you're not a bad person. Good people do things wrong. Good people make mistakes. But good people have what you have, which is the, the ability to have self-reflection and to look at themselves in the mirror and say, oh, wow, I made a mistake here. That's what you have. The problem is that you've taken yourself by the scruff of the neck and you, mm, how could you uh, make that mistake? Uh, you're so stupid. Uh, you're so foolish. Uh, what is wrong with you? And you're just giving yourself a good beating. Why are you doing that? Why do you beat yourself up when you make mistakes? One woman, she, she went through her healing program with me. She was doing fantastic. She was feeling better than ever. But then she started to feel some anxiety about a situation in her life. And then she said, oh, my gosh, I'm feeling anxiety. I guess I'm not healed. This is terrible. And she started to uh, beat herself up. <laughs> How could you be so stupid? You're never going to get better. Is it, is it actually helpful? to, to self-deprecate, to beat yourself down? Or are you just being the bully? The reason why we may think that it's effective to be hard on ourselves might go back to the parenting. We look back at the way our parents talk to us. They may have used harsh punishments. They may have tried to instill fear in us. They may have been negative. You may have had parents that were critical. Your parents may have been harsh. Your parents may have tried to motivate you with the belt or some other object that they get their hand on. They wanted to scare you. They wanted to frighten you. They wanted to give you pain. And that was a way that they tried to motivate you. Now, as a result, can you be surprised that you take the same approach to yourself? You may have been in a household where there's a lot of yelling. There's a yelling all the time, back and forth. And that's how people talk to each other. So that's how, that's how you learn to talk to yourself. You may have been in a household where your mom gave you no acceptance. There was never any acceptance. The love was not unconditional. The love was with conditions. If you live this way, act this way, do this and do that, then you might get a little bit of love. It's with conditions. That's not unconditional love. And so you learn to be the way your parents were to yourself. Do you think that might be happening in your case? If you have parents that were invalidating, they didn't validate you enough. Are you maybe not validating yourself enough? If so, you got to go back and we got to reverse the parenting. We need to go through the reparenting process. How do you do that? How do you reparent yourself? That little voice in your head? that's talking to yourself, when you talk to yourself, that is you, <laughs> this, this is you parenting the self. So you have to go back and speak to yourself the way that you would speak to a child, kindly. At least the way you would speak to a friend, kindly. That's how you reparent yourself. You have to do it correctly. Don't, don't speak to yourself anymore like a bully. Don't be harsh. Don't verbally abuse yourself. You're so stupid. How could you do this? Man, I'm such a, I'm such a loser. I failed to keep my relationship together. Stop it. Stop. It's verbal abuse. You, you have no right to verbally abuse a human being. Were you born a human? Yes. Then you have all the rights and privileges that are afforded all other human beings. Do you understand? You cannot abuse yourself. It's not right. 
Stop now. How should you talk to yourself? With kindness, with reasonableness. You should be as easygoing with yourself as you wish your parents were with you. That's how you talk to yourself. Easy going. Like you wish your parents were to you. You ever meet when you were a kid, you ever meet a grown up and you would say, they're so nice. A grown up, like someone else's parents or, or, some, or a teacher, and they weren't harsh with you. You would say, wow, they're so nice. So how did you treat that parent? How did you treat that grown up? Did you walk all over them because they were so nice? Likely not. Likely not. You might have actually, instead of, instead of walking all over them, you might have actually respected them because they were just so reasonable. So in other words, it works to be kind. As a kid, you weren't motivated to, to walk all over an adult that was kind to you, especially if you experienced the harshness and the bullying. Actually, you appreciated it an adult that, 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 had, that had some reasonableness, some kindness to them, some yieldingness, the ability to, to flex, some flexibility in their personality. That's how my stepfather was. My stepfather was a lamb, calm, never raised his voice. I mean, he didn't say much, but when he did speak, he didn't raise his voice. He's a hardworking man. Gave me a really nice model, a good working model of what it's like to be a man, to be calm, to be patient, because he, he had to have a lot of patience to deal with my mom. <laughs> because my mom was, was loud, she's boisterous, she's always filling the room with, with her presence. And, 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 and unfortunately, she didn't always have nice and kind things to say. She wasn't the worst in the world, but she was very, very emotional and emotionally immature. She was harsh. So as a kid, when I would do something wrong, my mother would become highly punishing and abusive as a result. She was physically abusive, especially. But um, I remember one time I was in the kitchen. I was like three years old, maybe four. I think I was about four. Actually, I could have been even five now that I think about where we were living. And uh, The Simpsons was on television. That was that was kind of like the new thing that kids were not supposed to be watching. And of course, we all wanted to watch it because it was a cartoon. And and I would watch it. And Bart Simpson, he would he would kind of curse a little bit. He would use the the H word. He would say hell. And so I, I thought that was pretty edgy. I kind of wanted to try that. So I was in the kitchen with my dad. He's a nice guy. So I figured, let me, let me try my, my boundaries here. And I opened up the refrigerator, picture me five years old. I said, where the hell's the jelly? <laughs> I'll never forget my stepfather. <laughs> I'm bracing for the beating here. You know, my stepfather looks at me and he says, I don't want to hear you talking like that. That was it. <laughs> that was all he said. He goes, I don't want to hear you talking like that. And I remember thinking in my system as a, as a five-year-old, I was like, that's it? Like, that's all you're going to say? Like, I just dropped the H word. Like, I just knew you. I, was, I wanted to see what he was going to do. But all he said was, I never want to hear you talk like that. You know, to this day, I've never cursed in front of him again. It's just out of the sheer respect of the fact that, that he was not harsh in his way of dealing with it. Just out of respect. I will not curse in front of this man. Because he said that to me when I was five. So does it, does it, does it work to be kind? Do you, think, do you think you may have turned out okay if your parents showed a little bit of kindness? Of course. Of course. So let's start showing some kindness to yourself. So let's reparent yourself and let's talk to yourself the way that the way that would have really worked for you. OK, let's give yourself that that forgiveness. So you do something wrong. You're going to make mistakes. So get rid of the perfectionist mindset. Like I can never make a mistake. Stop. You're going to make mistakes. So when you make the mistake every day, just say to yourself, 
hmm, I, I don't want to do that the way a kind parent would. Don't be negative, be positive. Say to yourself, you know what? I have a lot going for me. And if I keep down this road, that's going to mess me up. Instead of, look at me, failing again. No, no, no. Keep it positive, right? Instead of being critical, right? Build yourself up. Okay, that wasn't my, my cleverest moment. True. But I can learn from it, right? Instead of yelling, talk calm to yourself. Be smooth. Be nice. Give yourself acceptance, right? And unconditional love. Continue to love yourself through your mistake, through your trial. Oh, well, mm, I did, I did, I did kind of mess that up a little bit, but, but I got some things going for me. That's okay. That's okay. I can get back in there. Is that's how you would cheer on your teammate, right? You're out on the court, you're playing basketball, you're on the field, you're playing soccer, you're out there playing volleyball in the sand. That's how you cheer on your teammate, right? You don't yell at everybody. And we all know that guy, right? The guy that gets, he gets mad. He starts yelling at his teammates. It doesn't work. Nobody plays better under those conditions, right? We play better when we get nice, positive reinforcement. This is science. This, the research always shows that we do better in positive environments. So why is it that we think you know, if we talk to ourselves harshly, we're going to get a good performance? It may be because we've had times where we got tough with ourselves and we did perform well as a result. But it's like, uh, it's like if you're driving a race car, you got that turbo button. You can hit that turbo button maybe one time, right? But then the fuel burns out. That's how, that's how being hard on yourself works. You cannot do it all the time. That cannot be your re, your rely, what you rely on, right? You don't drive your car with the turbo button. You only use it that one time that you need to get that boost because it exhausts a lot of energy. Likewise, the strategy of being tough with yourself, there's only certain times where you should use it. You're in the gym, you're underneath that, that barbell, oh, you're trying to push out. This is the moment to get hard on yourself. Come on, you can do it. Come on, come on, do it. And then you push out, right? There's moments to do it. There's moments where you got to be tough with yourself. You know, I, I got to get this paper done. I cannot goof around any longer. I've waited till the last minute. It's time to get it done. There's times to be a little tough and it's good, but this is the minority of the time. Just like your, your body can only take 20% carbon. It needs mostly oxygen and nitrogen up to 98, I'm sorry, 85% oxygen and, and nitrogen. If your carbon gets above 15%, your body shuts down, your liver shuts down, you can't breathe anymore. You go into cardiac arrest, you got to go straight to the hospital and you may die. If your carbon gets above 15, 20%, that's how it is with harshness, negativity, being critical. We can handle about 15% self-criticism. The majority, 85% needs to be positivity, building yourself up, love, right? All the good stuff. You can only handle 15% criticism. And yes, it works just like carbon's good for your body in that portion. Does that make sense? So you can only give yourself the criticism some of the time. Sometimes you can handle a little criticism, a little self, a little self-deprecation. The majority needs to be positivity, building yourself up. Absolutely. I can do this. Create an environment as a parent Create an environment for your children, including your inner child. Create an environment of positivity. It's a positive environment here. Generally, there's very little criticism happening here. And everyone will excel in that environment. Everyone does better in an environment of positivity. Facts, right? Okay, here's the four steps to good parenting when, when, you, got a, when you got a discipline. Okay, you're going to use this on yourself to reparent yourself. So we break it down into four basic steps that a good parent's going to do. A kid messes up, a kid makes a mistake, or you made a mistake. First thing a parent's going to do, they're going to ask the insightful questions. Hey, what happened there? What exactly were you thinking? Why did you do that? 
Or what are the circumstances around that? Which part of this can you take responsibility for? And what part of that do you think someone else may be to blame for? Insightful questions help you to analyze the situation because you do need to see where the blame kind of needs to be distributed, right? Some of it is you, some of it is them. Sometimes it's something random that happened. It's no one's fault, so you shouldn't blame yourself. So that's why you're going to ask insightful questions. What happened? Why? Right? Let's break it down. Let's get it analyzed. That's step number one. Ask insightful questions. That's what a parent will do. Right? So you got in a fight in school, get in the car. Parent says, so I heard you got in a fight in school. Is that true? What happened? Why were you fighting? Who was involved? You know, they're going to get the, the insight going. Next, the parent moves into the lesson. Here's what the past is good for, and the only thing the past is good for, extracting lessons. Do not go back to the past just to play it over and over again and beat yourself up about what happened and where you went wrong. Don't do that. Just extract the lesson. You go back to the past. Okay, what do I got here? What happened? And then what can I learn? So that good parent in step two is going to ask you what the lesson is for the future. How can you handle this next time? That's what the parent's going to ask. Okay, so you're saying Billy came up to you and he was and he was calling you names. Okay, so how can you handle it next time when somebody is calling you names so that you don't get in trouble and you don't get in a fight? What do you think? Now, the, now you're future modeling with the child. So the child's running through scenarios and they're saying, Okay, well, I mean, I guess I could call the teacher. Very good. What else could you do? Oh, I could talk to you. Yes, very good. What else could you do? I could walk away. Okay, very good. What else could you, right? Now you're walking through different scenarios. Now the kid is becoming wiser as a result. That's what disciplining really means. It means to teach. You are teaching the child. You are helping them to become wiser by teaching them how to think. When you just yell at a kid, I can't believe you did this. You're in so much trouble. Does that teach them to think? No, it teaches them to fear. So they will develop anxiety later in life. That's all you've done. They've learned to fear you. Oh, mom or dad gets mad. They have not learned to think from you freaking out. That does not make them more intelligent. We need our children to learn to be wise, to learn to analyze their motives. This is the process we go through, asking insightful questions. So they look inside themselves and they relook at the situation and then extracting the lesson. That's number two. Number three, observe the consequences. Acknowledge the consequences. In some cases with the kid, he's not going to get a consequence now, but you're giving him a warning. So sometimes you're going to say, okay, well, look, this is the first time this has ever happened. But if I hear that you're fighting in school again, you're going to be grounded. So you, you've, in, you've instilled a consequence. Now, here's a tip for us as adults. We're reparenting ourselves. We don't have to give ourselves consequences because the consequences are already built into real life. They're already in the adult world. But you should give yourself the warning like a parent would give their child. So you say, you know what, if I do this again, where I go out and randomly have sex with someone... I may end up pregnant. It didn't happen this time, but that may happen in the future. If I give someone my trust like that again, I could end up getting hurt, getting robbed. I could end up losing my, my money, my belongings. I could end up getting into a relationship that's not healthy. Tell yourself what the consequences are, even if you didn't get the consequences this time. You got to review the consequences. If you got the consequences, just observe the consequences. Well, I did get pregnant. Well, the person did come in and take my life savings. Well, I did lose 13 years. Well, what are the consequences? Just review the consequences because that's the consequences of the action. The consequences are built in. You don't need to give yourself additional consequences. I repeat, you're an adult. You don't have to punish yourself. Punishment time is over. That was for when you're children, because under your parents' house, you're shielded from consequences. That's why children, that's why parents instill punishments. As an adult, you don't have to, you don't have to give yourself punishments. That's not necessary. Punishments are built in. If you get a freebie, you got away with it this time. 
it's okay because there's going to be other times that you get punished where it wasn't fair. So take your freebies. If you got away from it, oh yes, there was no consequence this time, but I need to be careful because I was texting and driving and that is super dangerous. Review the consequences. I could die or I could kill someone else. Recognize the consequences. That's step three. Step four is it's done. Walk away. The biggest problem with step four is that people try to put in, okay, and then I punish myself in step four. That's not a part of the game. It's not a part of the the, the process. If there's four steps, the fourth step is forgiveness. And here's what forgiveness looks like. Nothing. It's done. You've walked through it. The past is only good for extracting the lesson. You ask what happened. You figure it out. You analyze the situation. Number two, you've decided how you're going to handle it next time. So you've you've learned uh, as a result what you're going to do. Number three, you review the consequences. That's it. There's nothing else to do. Just forgive yourself. Well, how do you forgive? Well, number one, I have a video on YouTube that talks about how to forgive. Number two, forgiveness means letting it go, being past it, being over it. It was of no value to you. It is no good to you anymore to ruminate over the past. Think about it no longer. It's done. It's done. You've gone through the process and it's done. Does that make sense? Did you get all the steps? So you're asking yourself, you're you're reparenting yourself. You make a mistake, ask yourself what happened there, figure out how you should handle it next time, review the consequences. Number four, just forgive yourself and move on. There is nothing else for you to do. There are no other steps involved. Does that make sense? We have to learn to give our issues, our problems, neutral energy. Does that make sense? When you, when you go over your mistakes in your head and you feel really upset about them, the energy, the emotion that you're giving it tells the brain, this is important. Keep bringing this up. That's why your brain ruminates because you're giving it energy saying, oh man, I can't believe I forgot to feed the dog. Oh, you keep telling yourself it and you keep feeling so bad about it. And as a result, you're ruminating on it. Your brain goes back and says, let's go. This is really important. We got to keep bringing this baby up because this is a real serious thing. Because every time we bring it up, he or she gets a lot of emotion, right? So instead of giving it emotion, give it neutral energy, no positive energy, no negative energy. You just think about what happened. You think about the time that, that, you, that you got in a car accident and you crashed up your mom's car and you're not going to beat yourself up about it. You're going to give it neutral energy. Once you've already gone through the steps, you asked yourself what happened. You figured out how you're going to handle the situation in the future. So you learned the lesson from it. You got the consequences from it. Now you got to pay for the damage. Forgive yourself. You don't have to feel bad anymore at all. Forgive yourself. It's done. So you think about, oh man, I crashed the car. Just neutral energy. Hmm. I think I should take out the garbage. Then go take out the garbage. Oh, I think I'll watch some television. Then I'll play some PlayStation 5. Just like that. Give it neutral energy. You feel nothing for it. What happens is it recategorizes it in the mind. Your brain says, hey, every time we bring up this issue, she just gives it neutral energy. It's like it's not important. Okay, push it out, push it to the back, put it in the recycle bin. That's how it works. When you give things neutral energy, your brain doesn't continue to want to ruminate on the situation. And it takes time to do this process because you got to retrain the brain to realize this is not important. So many times it will come up and many times you have to just, "Mm, I've already dealt with that. That's, That's in the past.
Keep your space positive because you have to create an environment of positivity because that's the best environment for you to thrive, the best environment for you to grow. Hopefully you're finding this, this information to be helpful to you. If you're like Doug, you, you, you realize maybe you're being a little bit of a bully to yourself. That was, that's what Doug did. Analyze your values. Your emotions come from your values. If you feel bad about something, you feel guilty about something, it's, 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 if you feel sad about something, you feel angry about something, it's reflecting that, that it, it, there's a violation of your values. That's where that comes from. So, so when, when, you, when you recognize your, your values, then you recognize why you're having the emotion. It contradicts your values, right? So if you're sad that your house burned down, it's because you valued your house. So recognize what your values are and stop contradicting your own values by bullying yourself. Because you'll realize, well, I'm really mad at my spouse for lying to me. I'm mad at my spouse for cheating on me. Why are you mad at your spouse for lying to you? Because it was disrespectful. Okay. And why are you mad at your spouse for cheating on you? Because it was disloyal. Okay. Your values are respect and loyalty, right? Now, if you sit here and bully yourself, are you respecting yourself? No. If you, if you blame yourself for everything, are you being loyal to yourself? No. Don't violate your own values. You cannot control the past you. So stop thinking about it. Don't think about things you cannot control. I cannot go into the past and make myself not have married my, my narcissistic ex-wife. I can't do that. So I give that no energy. I don't think about the past. You think about your present and your future. Only two yous you can control. You can control present you. You can control future you. You cannot control past you. It's done. So do not think about past you, except for just going back to grab data. What's the lesson here? That's it. That's the value of past. Just extract the lesson. There's nothing else there for you. Don't ruminate on it. So there's a method we can use. It's called the JAT method. You can learn about the JAT method on, on, uh, on, on the YouTube videos. Uh, there's one called 15 minute cure for anxiety, depression. The job method is where you put a, a line right down the center of the page, and then you're going to write your, your, your subconscious thoughts, the things you're perseverating about on the left-hand side. And then on the right-hand side, you're going to write your conscious response to those thoughts. So you're going to go into your parenting mind and you're going to pretend like your child said those things to you and and they're looking for your advice now how will you wisely advise that child use the jap method to organize your anxiety to organize your sadness your depression your anger it is a cure period i use the same method in my sessions and within 30 minutes we're bringing people out of depression bringing them out of anxiety, out of low self-worth, out of low self-esteem. Many of you here can attest because you were in a session with me and we did it and you felt better by the end of the session. It worked. So I want to encourage you to utilize this tool, the JAP method. It was designed for you to regulate your metaphysical health. Please learn it. Please use it. And please be like Elaine. Elaine also had a narcissistic marriage that she was healing from. But when she came out of it, instead of beating herself up, she looked back only to grab the lesson. And she realized the lesson is that she undervalued herself and she would never do that again. And so she started to, in her rehabilitation process, focus on her strengths, focus on her purpose, give herself a new identity. She created an idea that she would be like this Mother Teresa character. And she wanted to, to help children because children are a passion for her in her old marriage. She couldn't have kids because of the way her husband was. So now instead of regretting 
that she's not married anymore or feeling lonely, she decided to look at the positives, which is now she could have kids because her husband would, it wouldn't have ever worked with him. So she actually put herself in line to adopt. She became a foster parent. She ended up adopting children. She had so much joy in that, that years later, she opened up an orphanage where that she could regulate the standards of this orphanage so that it would be high quality. And she could bring joy, peace, stability to children's lives, children who didn't have parents, which was kind of the way she grew up. She turned it around. She turned her situation around by focusing on the positivity, not being self-critical. So I hope you guys will do the same.